the confidence uh, actually was strengthened last year. Now, last year was <laughs> was a, a, a terrible year for everything crypto. But if you think about what happened, it was the centralized, opaque uh, players who went bankrupt, FTX, Celsius, uh, Three Arrows Capital. Um, and, and what did we see from Bitcoin? Bitcoin is completely decentralized and transparent. It started because of 0809, the lack of transparency in the traditional financial services ecosystem. Founder and CEO of ARK Investments Kathy Wood recently talked about the urgent need for a flawless monetary system like Bitcoin. In an interview with Bloomberg that was released on Friday, the well-known businesswoman and hedge fund manager spoke about her expectations for the U.S. economy in the wake of what appears to be an early Fed turn. Wynn is of the opinion that Fed Chair Jerome Powell and other important figures, such as Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, are now aware of the economic harm that the Federal Reserve caused with its impulsive interest rate hike in 2022. Wood continued, recent utterances from Yellen and Summers demonstrate that they are aware that the U.S. economy is moving in a direction that is very different from what they have been forecasting since 2021. Please take a moment before we listen to Kathy Wood to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and enable post notifications for more content like this. Please leave your feedback regarding Wood's interview in the section below. Thank you and enjoy the video. No, if anything, I, I saw an exaggerated uh, reaction last year to uh, fears that inflation and interest rates were embedded in the system uh, like they were in the 70s. And we just didn't believe that at all. In fact, we were seeing a lot of early signs of uh, inflation coming down, actual deflation surfacing. Uh, so this does not surprise us. I think what has happened here, there there are three people who have weighed in in, in, in the last week mm -hmm. who really have changed their points of view. One is Larry Summers. Larry Summers was almost apoplectic last year. So this is the former Treasury Secretary. Right. Uh, almost apoplectic about inflation. And I think he truly influenced the Fed because he was so sure that we were in a 70s style inflation. If you'll notice in the last week, he said, uh, uh, okay, now don't don't signal what you're going to do in the future. We're seeing some economic weakness here. And I, I think the other thing he was saying, not explicitly, was, hey, some prices are coming down that I didn't expect to come down. You know, the oil price is roughly half of where it was last March. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the first person. The second person was uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. And remember, I think the market last year got really upset when she changed her mind on transitory and uh and 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 i think that fed chairman powell as well and uh and and turned him into an even more hawkish mode along with the rest of the ford bed, uh, board members she this week uh said that now that inflation is coming down we're probably going to be looking at the bigger risk being kind of mired in low inflation low growth mm -hmm. that was a big change and it effectively says, wow, maybe it was transitory after all. It was just a little longer than we expected. Who knew supply chain problems would last two to three years? Who knew Russia would invade Ukraine? And then the third the third thing that happened, this was really important, I think, in the Q&A, um, uh, Chairman Powell himself said, uh, I agree with Lyle Brainerd. I, we do not believe we're in the middle of a wage price spiral. And that's another code phrase uh, for the 70s style inflation. So I think that is what the market's responding to. We see the deflation in the pipeline because commodity prices, which are uh, at the top of the funnel, uh, have been coming down on balance. Now, we're, we're seeing right now some interruptions in that as China moves away from its zero COVID policy. 
But I think the fake out here is China has been building inventories, particularly of energy. It's been getting Russia's energy for a 40% discount to what the rest of us are paying. So why wouldn't it build inventories? So I think I think um, that fear is probably going to be or has been uh, a little overblown in terms of ramifications for inflation. Mm. Uh, and I also don't think China's China's taking off. But anyway, we have the funnel. We had at uh, holiday time massive discounting. Uh, and even though we had massive discounting in the fourth quarter, inventory accumulation accelerated. That was the biggest surprise to me. Mm. Wait a minute, final sales were that punk uh, uh, that inventories built even though uh, retailers and others were trying to clear the shelves with these massive discounts, that was very interesting mm. to me. So I think underlying demand here is um, I, I, right. basically the consumer is railing against price increases because real average wages have gone down and uh, the consumer is going to win this battle. Well, the confidence uh, actually was strengthened last year. Now, last year was <laughs> was a, a, a terrible year for everything crypto. But if you think about what happened, it was the centralized, opaque uh, players who went bankrupt, FTX, Celsius, uh, Three Hours Capital. Um, and, and what did we see from Bitcoin? Bitcoin is completely decentralized and transparent. It started because of 0809, the lack of transparency in the traditional financial services ecosystem. And I remember when we did our research uh, and Art Laffer, uh, I mm -hmm. mentioned him, I mentioned him the first time he was on your show. Yep. Um, he took us through uh, what Bitcoin meant to him and mm. it was wow art. The, this is a, a rules-based, monetary it's a rules-based digital monetary system and it's global and and there's no human intervention uh it's very disciplined it's mathematically metered to top out at 21 million units well in the last year the response to in the last three years the responses to covid the the fiscal and monetary responses that you know, in many countries are causing hyperinflation and, you know, fiscal crises. We're seeing protests and riots all over the place. Um, well, where do these people go for an insurance policy against an implosion in their purchasing power and wealth? It is in something like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is an insurance policy and it is an insurance policy for the for for everyone against confiscation of wealth. It's been a, pa a tough couple of years for the ETF and for many of your ETFs. How do you win them back? Well, actually, I, I don't think we lost many investors. I think the shock to most people uh, is how well we held our assets. In our underperformance started in February of 21, when uh, people were starting to get vaccinated, going back to work, and these fears of inflation started to surface. So since February of 21, we have seen a massive down round in our innovation strategies. And in 21, we had very significant inflows, most of which we kept. Uh, I think the net was 17 billion that year. Uh, last year, uh, again, a, a, a horrific year. I think for the year, our flagship uh, was, so ARKK was uh, uh, in flows, one, more than $1.5 billion. And I think that shocked a lot of people. Uh, what we saw was averaging down. Mm. Uh, many of our loyal shareholders did average down. And I think one of the reasons they did is we were out there every step of the way, giving away our research, reassuring our clients that actually innovation solves problems and we have so many problems now created by supply chain problems the war created by the fed and the demand destruction which is hurting margins which technology will solve in terms of increasing productivity do you believe the federal reserve will be prepared to reduce interest rates so rapidly if the economy experiences a recession or other sorts of economic downturn 
In the comments box below, please leave your responses as well as your thoughts on Wood's interview. Additionally, if you enjoyed this video, switch on post alerts, subscribe to the channel, and click like.